It's no secret that I love Star Wars. I have the movies, books, comics, games, and collectibles. Yet there are things in Star Wars that people just don't understand, and even devoted fans can be sketchy on the details. That's because Star Wars is very loosely a science fiction and more closely resembles science fantasy. Confused? Here's the difference. Star Trek is a science fiction because many of the technologies they use have their fundamental understanding grounded in science as we know it. Transporters, replicators, they may seem like magic, but have roots in scientific ideas like quantum entanglement. Star Wars, on the other hand, has many concepts that lie outside the realm of our scientific understanding. Pure fantasy, or in other words, just made up from whole cloth. While this can make a story fantastic and interesting, it can also bring with it inconsistencies in storytelling. The writers play fast and loose with ideas because, well, they're not well defined. Now, I love role-playing games, and Star Wars just happens to be one of my favorites. For an RPG to work well, all of these nebulous concepts have to be defined to give a sense of fair play to the players and give a framework for game masters. The writers of the Star Wars RPG, through many editions, have done a masterful job with it, allowing me to fully explain to you the conceptual mess that is hyperspace. Hyperspace in Star Wars is how a ship can travel faster than light. At different points in Star Wars history, it has been considered an extra spatial dimension, a parallel universe, or even a different way of existence. Imagine, if you will, the oil and water experiment. Heavy liquids fall to the bottom, while less dense liquids stay at the top. Now imagine that is the multiverse. The universe that we live in is the most dense, and moving through it is like moving through molasses, which keeps us from going faster than the speed of light. All the layers less dense than us is hyperspace, or extra space where the laws of physics are different than normal space. Faster. When a hyperspace engine, or hyperdrive, is used, it forces the ship out of real space and into that blurry tube we call hyperspace. The better the engine, the further the ship is taken out of real space, allowing it to travel faster and faster within the hyperdimension. Hyperdrives are rated in multipliers. The lower the multiplier, the faster the speed. What does a multiplier do? It's a rating of how much time it takes for you to get from place to place. So if a times one hyperdrive allows you to get to Tatooine in one day, a times three hyperdrive will get you there in three. Now, the Millennium Falcon is the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy and has a hyperdrive multiplier of 0.5, which kind of explains Han's line. She'll make 0.5 past light speed. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. Only, he says light speed instead of hyperspeed. But he also confuses what a parsec does as well. It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Han? Just be quiet now. The more you talk, the more you make me think the real brains of the operation is, um... Once in hyperspace, a ship cannot be followed unless a homing beacon is applied. But, since a ship cannot turn in hyperspace, because the dimensions of the hyperspace do not allow it, it is a tube after all, a crafty person can speculate on destinations along the course of a hyperspace jump. That pilot can leave hyperspace at any point along their course and set a new hyperspace course to throw off pursuers. There are also natural dangers to hyperspace as well. While most things don't affect a ship in hyperspace because it's in a different state of reality, gravity does reach through and generates a pressure in the higher spatial realms. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, boy. Without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star or bounce too close to a supernova and then it'd end your trip real quick, wouldn't it? Ah, Han, you're finally making sense. This is also why you can't enter hyperspace in the atmosphere of a planet. You have to wait until you get to a high enough orbit to engage the drive. A ship called an interdictor cruiser creates artificial gravity along hyperspace routes to pull ships out of hyperspace for inspection. How much or how little gravity is needed for this to happen is up to the story. It's a science fantasy. There are also other dangers 
like special nebula or radiation zones that may affect hyperspace as a story demands. So let's say that hyperspace is real for a moment. Many theoretical physicists propose the idea of a multiverse with many realities that each have different physical properties. There could certainly be one where the speed of light or the laws of motion are conducive to faster than light travel. We could open up a wormhole into these other spatial realms and fly through in order to travel the vast distances we need. The problem with this would be, as soon as we step into that wormhole, that universe's physics begin to affect us, and there's no way of knowing exactly what that would do. Changing the speed of light may cause all of the electrons in your atoms to break away and your body would literally disintegrate. Exploring, Exploring any, any alternate, alternate universe, universe would be a, would risky, be a risky venture, venture indeed. indeed. Also, the dimensions of that alternate universe may not match up with our own. So any movement within that universe may not take you in the same distance or even the same direction in correlation to our own. In fact, you may travel for light years within that alternate dimension and may not move a meter when you return. This week's artist is the insanely talented Steve Prescott. Links in the basement. Go check him out. If you enjoy this video, consider hitting the like button. For every like I get, I gain 10 experience. And as we all know, you should never stop gaining experience. You have gained 30 experience points.